Hey, this is Latif Mikado, and you're listening to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, where I take some time each night to try and reflect on the freestyle scene, where it is, where it's going, and try to figure out how to sustain it, not just for future generations to enjoy, but also to benefit. So sit back, relax, and let's talk some freestyle. It's my third episode. Honestly, it's um, hard to believe. <laughs> um, yeah, so anyway, folks, uh, I just want to, those who have been uh, tuning in for the last couple of days, I just want to thank you. Um, this is probably going to be the hardest part of this whole venture is maybe the first, I don't know, what do you give me? Maybe 10, maybe 12 episodes before I kind of got the hang of it. (laughs) Um, I don't want to script anything. I have no bullet points. I have no notes. I don't even know what I want to talk about when I, when I get here. Um, I kind of just want to open up and and see what comes out, you know, I'm sure as time goes on, uh, right now in the office was still slow, so there's not a lot of interaction, I mean, we have some, and I'll see if I bring some of that up, Uh, but it's not like it normally is, normally there's a lot of stuff going on, anyway, um, today is Friday, Um, it's been really rainy for the last two days, Um, here, I'm in North Carolina, Um, but what's so funny is that I love the rain. <laughs> I really do. Um, this this is what's so crazy. Okay, a lot of you guys believe, okay, I don't know, maybe this is going to mess me up. Maybe nobody's going to buy my books because of this. I don't know. But a lot of people have the impression that I listen to freestyle music when I write my books. And the answer to that is absolutely not. A couple of reasons, Okay. The first reason is um, I can't write listening to lyrics. So if it's not instrumental, it's going to throw me off. I have the worst attention span to the point where if I'm talking to you like I am right now and somebody comes in to my office they don't even have to say anything. It's just the fact that they came in, they're going to throw me off. And you guys might catch that here and there. I kind of had that situation yesterday. So if you listen to like maybe almost to the middle, you'll hear where I kind of go silent. Well, that's what happened. I got interrupted and so I had to make sure I make an announcement. Please do not come in here uh, when I'm doing the podcast, okay? Because it will throw me off. At least now it does. Maybe later on it won't. So, um... But uh, anyway, yeah, so what I was trying to say is I, I really, yeah, I don't, I don't listen to freestyle when I'm writing my book. So one of the reasons is the lyrics. I cannot write listening to lyrics. It's just not going to happen. Um, the second reason is uh, a lot of it is too fast. It's too fast. If anything, I might want to work out listening to freestyle, but I definitely, I can't write to it. So What do I listen to when I write? And believe me, I listen to stuff. I have to. Um, It's hard for me just to to write, you know, cold. I need to create emotion. A lot of times I'll lower my my light. Um, Like I'm doing right now, uh, believe it or not. I'm in the office. I have all the lights off except one, my desk night, light night, uh, my desk light. (laughs) Um, I keep that on, kind of sets the mood. Um, and this tells me that I'm basically done for the day. So when I'm done with the podcast, I get out of the office, you know? So, but, um, yeah, so first reason is I can't write over lyrics. Second reason is the music is too fast, you know? Um, so what do I like to listen to when I write? In fact, this is what I listen to when I'm doing any kind of creative stuff that I uh, um, mostly writing or maybe building 
a post or building some sort of, I don't know, maybe I'm working with graphics. Um, I like to listen to, you guys could uh, go on YouTube and, and um, type this in, lo-fi, L-O-F-I, lo-fi, hip-hop, rain, yep, R-A-I-N, rain, just like it rains. So what you're getting here is you're getting this really kind of slow, kind of mellow music. Sometimes it has a hip-hop beat, because even though you type hip-hop, there's some without the hip-hop beat that, that's dope. I mean, I love it. But in the background, way in the background, if you listen, it sounds like it's raining. <laughs> you know? Um, sometimes Angel comes in here and she starts to laugh. She's like, what the hell are you listening to? That just sounds so depressing. But to me, it's not depressing. Now, I remember when I was younger, yeah, the rain was depressing. Why? Because I want to go out and play and mom wasn't going to let me go out and play in the rain, you know? Um, but as I got older, rain did something for me. Now, let me make one tweak here. If I have to get dressed up and I have to go somewhere, I don't want it to rain. I don't want it to be hot either, <laughs> so I'm a pain in the ass. <laughs> um, but um, when it's raining, a lot of times I will go right on my porch and I'll sit down and I'll bring a book or I'll get on my phone or sometimes I'll just kind of kick back and, 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 and just stay out of the rain. That's not typical though. I'm always doing something. Like I, I feel that there's only so many, you know, hours in the day and everything has to be productive. So very rarely, unless I'm going to sleep, are you going to see me just sitting there staring into space that doesn't really happen. Okay. But so type into YouTube lo-fi rain or lo-fi hip hop rain. Tell me what you think. Tell me if, if it feels like something that you can vibe to. And, and when you do that, I want you to look at something also. Look at the images that they use on the YouTube. Okay. Uh, it's really cool. A lot of it's from um, Tokyo. So you'll see, you know, maybe somebody walking with an umbrella and it will well, actually be a still, but you'll be able to see the rain coming down so you can hear it and see it. So it's really cool. So, but that's what I like to write to. Um, and I wrote Freestyle for Life like that and Freestyle and pretty much everything else that I write, that's what I listen to. Um, I used to also listen to um, a lot of drum and bass. I love drum and bass, the right drum and bass. I like some electronica, not all of it. Um, I like dubstep. However, to me, there's not a lot of it. It's hard for me to find that stuff. I find it, but it's like, it's they all sound the same, so it's hard to tell if I'm even listening to a different song. So, But that's pretty much it. I don't listen to R&B because it makes me think too much, you know, so I won't I won't listen to uh, R&B. Definitely can't hip listen to hip-hop. Too many lyrics. <laughs> um, so anyway, but that's it. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, today it's a rainy day. Um, I love it. There was only one time that I didn't like it, and that's when I had a problem with my roof. Actually, I had two of the homes uh, that I had out here um, that I owned. Uh, both of them had problems with the roof, and uh, that's the only time I used to kind of get stressed out. So, um, uh, but other than that, you know, when it rains, I'm actually cool. And when it thunders and lightnings, oh man. I love that shit. I know I sound weird, right? <laughs> anyway, uh, everybody else thinks I'm weird. So, but anyway, today is Friday. Um, these days, Friday doesn't mean much to me. Um, I've been self-employed since I was in like my very early 20s. I worked at Metropolitan Records for about five years. Um, but before and after that, I was always self-employed. And I did that, there was a, just a little, uh, uh, I had a motive working at Metropolitan. Um, I always wanted to work at a record company. So that was part of, uh, I had to check that off the bucket list. But also it just made sense at that time, I was, um, um, I had Susie signed to the label, so it made sense. Um, 
I was doing retail marketing. So my job was to, I had a couple of jobs there. My main job was to fulfill back orders. So what I used to do is I used to take all the back orders from before I even worked there. In fact, when I first got the job, I got to talk about the story of the job. It's crazy, but let me jump. I want to jump ahead a little bit. I'll talk about the job some other time. But um, when I got there, they gave me um, a stack of papers, which was about the about the size of a phone book. And when I asked the boss, that was Jerry, I asked Jerry Solano, and I asked him, I said, what is this? He said, that's our back order list. He goes, those are, that's, those are the, the, the pro- that's the product that we owe the retailers. And at that time, we still had cassettes, a lot of vinyl, and the CDs were, you know, most popular. No MP3s yet. They were there, but they weren't popular. Um, so they had this uh, warehouse that was huge. Like it was a, a hangar. It looked like a hangar. You could fit a plane in there. And when I'm talking about mountains of CDs, I'm talking about metropolitan compilations. When I'm talking about mountains, I'm talking about <laughs> hundreds of thousands of these things. It's almost like a dump truck or several dump trucks backed up into this warehouse and just dumped these CDs into piles. So this is what would happen. So if, if you look at the back, the barcode of a Metropolitan CD, I believe it's the last four numbers. Um, usually f- the last four numbers might be like one, two, four, five, okay? So when they would do give us uh, the order, it would have the compilation name or cassette, and then it would be the one, two, four, five. So... If it, if it had a two, then it would have a dash two. That would mean it's a CD. Or if it's a, a dash four, that was, I believe, a cassette. Um, so uh, I would have to go with the back order, go to that pile, and see if I could find that CD. We're talking about absolutely impossible. Okay? Um, so, um, so... That was, you know, so what I ended up doing when I first got the job is I had told them, I said, listen, before I even come in here and um, try to fulfill these orders, I need to organize this place. And they, they were like, how long do you think that's going to take? I said, well, it's probably going to take me a few weeks. You know, there's a, a lot of stuff in here. And uh, what those CDs were, they were returns. So this is how the, the, the retail record stores worked. They would order, let's say, 10 CDs. And they would take the 10 CDs and they had, it was a net 90. So they can hold on to those CDs for up to 90 days. If they go past 90 days, we had to build them. Okay? And they would pay for those those CDs that we sent them. But what they normally did is they would return the CDs, send them back to us, along with a new order. And a lot of times the new order was another stack of CDs because apparently that first stack didn't sell. So they would get, uh, they would talk to their DJs and they would try to make a list of what are the CDs that people are asking for. So they might send in 10 CDs, send back, and then order 10 more. So the exchange is even as long as they did before the 90 days. Now, this was the bad part, though. When they sent those 10 CDs, and it was never 10, trust me, it was always like 100. (laughs) I'm I'm saying 10 to make it easy. When they sent those 10 CDs in, they had source stickers, okay? So they either had a price tag on it, a label, a sticker, or a source sticker, which is that little... uh, wire thing that when you walk out the security the little security tab so when you walk out it beeps when you walk out of the store if you try to shoplift it so and there's no way to take that off of the plastic without ripping the plastic so the job was get those cds they get returned take a razor blade slice it open throw the plastic out repackage them put them all in a box make a, a work order 
send it back to the manufacturer for that, that made the CDs to get them re-shrinked and have them sent back to me, okay? This was a regular, regular thing, okay? Um, the only ones that we didn't re-shrink were the CD5s or really any of the singles. Any of the singles, whether they were uh, CDs or cassettes, we didn't re-shrink those. Those, they came back, we ended up you know, using those as promos. Hold on. Get a little drink of water. Um, so, um, so those didn't go. So what we used to do, like with Susie's singles, since I worked there, I used to um, gather all her singles and I used to take them on the road with us. And we never used to sell them. It was just too much of a hassle. And she didn't want to sell them. She wanted to give them away to fans. So we were one of the few people that used to be able to go out there and um, and give away um, and give away CDs for free. Um, actually, we spoiled a lot of people, uh, and they used to always ask us, you know, you got any more CDs? So it was cool. It was cool. So we usually gave it to like the first whatever. I used to try to bring about one case, which was like 25 CDs, to give them away. Um, but anyway, we did that for a long time, and uh, that's pretty much how that how that job um, how that worked. But um, you know, other than that, uh, I always worked from home. So Fridays wasn't a big deal. In fact, I love working. I love what I do. People tell me, yo, you got to be careful. You're getting older. You should you know, slow down a bit. And I don't believe that. I, I believe that if you work in a shipyard, if you work construction, if you pave streets, if you do maintenance, any that any 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 of those jobs that uh, require a lot of physical uh, work that you're really not too crazy about doing, you know, uh, I think that's probably even the the definition between uh, the difference between a job and a career. Jobs are uh, not too many people are looking for jobs. They they end up having to get jobs later. But um, growing up, if you think about it now, anything you ever. Uh, thought about or mentioned doing or dreamt about doing was probably a career. It was probably a, an astronaut, veterinarian, a police officer, you know. So those were your careers. Um, if you're working uh, in a fast food chain, most likely you did not dream about that. If you work in doing maintenance in the airport, cleaning toilets, though they pay good, don't get me wrong, I'm not dogging those jobs. Those are real jobs. Um Uh, But I could pretty much guarantee that wasn't your dream job. That wasn't what you were dreaming about, you know. So Fridays uh, are uh, actually a little depressing for me because I like to work. And then I know tomorrow, Saturday, Angel don't like me coming into the office, but I do. I get up seriously early, so I get several hours in before she even wakes up. So, Um, But uh, I like to come in here and do something, get, get something done. I, I, anybody who ever tells me, Hey, I'm bored. I don't know what to do, man. I haven't been bored in years. Like I can always come up with something to do. You know, if I'm not writing, I'm, I'm posting stuff or I'm recording a video or a podcast. So I always have something to do. So I don't know how you guys feel about Fridays. Um, um, I could pretty much, Pretty much guarantee if you guys are just have a regular job, you probably look forward to Fridays. Um, but um, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Go do your thing. Do you? It's just not something. Uh, not something that I do. However, once um, we get back on the road, which we go back on the road February 14th, which is Valentine's Day, uh, we're heading out to Fresno. Uh, then from there, we're we're back on the road. I think we're on the road 27th or 28th. We'll be in, uh, I think we'll be in El Paso. And then we have some stuff in the Bay Area of California. Um, so and we have Florida coming up. So we're, we're going to be pretty busy this year. So <coughs> once that comes back uh, into play, once um, we're back on the road, a lot of times, most of the time, we're doing Saturday shows. So, which means that we will, Friday we're pretty much prepping. So, we'll be going 
and you get your hair and nails done. I usually go get me a haircut, find an outfit, and then we we pack and then we try to we try to shut down before midnight. The Saturday morning we usually we drive off to Charlotte Airport. Um, we hop on a plane and then we go wherever we gotta go. Usually the show is done that night. And then the following morning, we're back on a plane headed home until the next show. So that's usually the routine. Um, it could get tiring if, you, if you're doing a lot of shows. We try to uh, pace them. So if I get two, three shows, calls in one month, unless they're concerts, I try to move them. So if it's just a club and they're asking me for a date for whether it's Susie or the Cover Girls, and they're asking us for a date for... Uh, the same uh, the same month that we're doing another show. A lot of times I try to move it to the next to the following month. I don't try to bring it close. I try to bring it further so we all have enough time to promote it. Um, the only time, like I said, we can't move the date is when it's a concert. So whether that's an Alan Beck or a Bobby D show, those big concerts are set in stone. And if you can't work around them, you're not gonna do. You're not gonna be on it. So, but um, anyway. Um, so that's pretty much it. Um, again, I appreciate you guys. Um, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free. Um, I'm also posting this podcast on YouTube. It's also available on Anchor FM. So that's anchor.fm. Um, it will soon be available on iTunes. I believe you can find it now on Spotify. Um, I'm going to get more information on that. So, uh, let me know also where you guys, um, where, where you're listening to it, uh, to the podcast. And, um, again, I really appreciate you guys. Um, it's Friday. I will be back on here tomorrow evening, God willing. Uh, but in the meantime, be safe. Don't drink and drive. Um, have a good time. God bless. And... Good night, Freestyle. Before I lay me down to sleep, I pray to hear a freestyle beat. For if I die before I wake, I hope to make it to the break.